Hey guys, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty, and today I'm going to talk about Season 1 of Invincible. Yes, there is some positives, there are going to be some negatives, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, if you watched my previous video on Invincible, it had very, very mixed views. Some people hated my thoughts on it, and some people absolutely agreed with it, and some a bit between. So, before you go and go in the comments section and tell me where I should stick my head and how I'm such an evil person, or whatever it may be, please take a moment to actually watch the video, and maybe even read some of my comments below. That's one of the biggest things there I got from this, is the controversialness of it. People sometimes just can't have a civil discussion. So I'm going to talk about some of those things as well as how it rela uh, related to that video. So let's first talk about one of the big things right off the bat is the race swapping of Amber Bennett. Now I'm going to put up right off the bat, I enjoyed the Invincible cartoon series and I wanted it to be good from the start. I read the comic book series in its t entirety before I even knew a cartoon series was coming out. So when I hear something like that... I get excited, but I also get concerned, especially with today's day and age of wokeness. Well, Amber Bennett was race swapped, and I got some people right off the bat that were like, oh, you're a racist because of this and that. I said, no, no, I don't. I like my characters to be coming off the page and into the comic, and I said, I don't think that's necessarily always a bad thing that there's a change. So they automatically assumed that they didn't watch my video. They didn't read and listen to any of my thoughts that I had made. And so therefore, they were a little bit crazy if you will <laughs> so for example if somebody mentioned well actually more than one why didn't you mention invincible's mom then being half asian first of all they didn't have that character released at that time they only had some of the character designs and some of the information so i didn't know everything and i even mentioned that in the video so it was based on what was available at that time i also said too as the series went you know i wanted the series to do well so I funny, people automatically assume faux racism and everything else when it wasn't really there. And that's one of the things that entered us. Another person goes, wait, do you see Bulletproof? You're, their people are going to be really pissed. And I'm thinking, no, Bulletproof is a different character. And the reason they thought that is because they actually must have read the comic, which made me happy. There's a character called Bulletproof comes into the series as a, a black male. And he wears the former Invincible costume, which, once again, I think there's nothing wrong with. He's a different character. That's fine. That's not race really swapping or changing a character. That's the actual character. Another one of the dumb arguments I heard, too, was, well, they hired the voice cast, and then they changed the characters to fit that. You hire actors to portray a character, not vice versa. That's a very backwards argument, and let alone a bit racist, if you ask me, because you're saying you can't hire a black female actress to portray and do voice work for a white actress? Maybe the racism is in you, if you think that way. So anyway, nonetheless, I wanted the cartoon to be great. And Amber Bennett, here we go. Race swap, sure. But I did find that throughout the series for season one, they added more depth to that character. They sort of took a combination of that character and her friend slash roommate or whatever it was and put them together. And I think she had more depth than the Amber in the comic, which made her nice. But the discrepancy was at the very end of the season one where she said she knew he was invincible. And then why, if that was the case, why did she treat him like such crap when she knew he was doing what he had to do? She knew then that how badly he got hurt, but tended to ignore that fact. That didn't make a whole lot of sense there. She knew what he put himself in front of to protect her as well as others and still treated him like complete garbage. Now, some might say, well, yeah, but it's because she was hurt because he didn't trust her enough with his to be able to reveal his secret identity. And you know what? I understand that. But let's be honest here. How empathetic is that person then? How good is that character? Maybe that's one of the reasons they'll break up. Who knows? Uh, in the cartoon series. Because they will break up. Unless they change it. And, and that part is where a lot of people dis didn't like her very much. And to be fair, that doesn't do that character any justice either. Because it made her very shallow in that regard. Now, even though, as I said, I can sure see she's going to be hurt that he didn't reveal that to her. But yet again, how many high school relationships make it? I mean, really. And how close were they at that point? How much, how much were they together? You know, is that a good enough time to feel that comfortable that you're going to reveal something that could be 
absolutely dramatic to your family. I mean, you break up. Some people do very vindictive things. You could have outed him as a superhero, his whole family, put him in danger and everything. So to expect that is very, very, very selfish. So I don't think they did the character Amber Bad any justice there, but we'll see. And so there's some, I read, read some of the people's reviews and some people said things, for example, like, well, there wasn't much... Uh, detail and history and richness in the side characters. Well, news behold to you, actually there was quite a bit. And that's one of the things, I'm going to bounce back to Amber here for a second. People also got on me, well, she's only a minor character, it doesn't matter. I disagree. Those foundations is what helped shape the character of Invincible and built him onto his next relationship, which becomes a very important relationship. He learned a lot from those. It's like having a ladder. A ladder is pretty easy to climb, but if you remove several of the rungs, it's not as easy to climb anymore. And if you call those rungs non-essential, well, you're making a mistake there. All those things were progressive uh, movements of the character, progressing that character and showing character growth. And I don't mean spoilers to you, but there's a little spoiler here. He, uh, Invincible ends up with Adam Eve. Okay, and this is, you could see it. Maybe that's part of the reason, the growth and the transition to, you know, I feel more comfortable with another hero. Somebody I can share these secrets with. Somebody I don't have to worry about whatever as much, you know, but yet there's still the other problems that rely with that as well, which is great character development. Now, also, as I said, they were complaining about a lack of character development. You, if that's the case, these people making those complaints clearly have not read the comic book because you're already starting to see some character development in Robot, and you're going to see a lot with other characters as well. So I think you should be inclined to keep watching for that. Other people complain, too, that the show was incredibly violent. <laughs> a newsflash, that's what a comic was. And I'm sort of actually glad for that. So with saying with that, I, I think that's one of the benefits of this show. We're definitely seeing the the uh, growth of Adam, Eve, and Invincible together. The story and the cartoon has very good pacing. And the comic book was something that had great pacing as well. Yeah, they had constantly multiple branching stories going on that were going to converge and and go different ways all, all the time throughout the story. But it never felt slow. It didn't feel like you're picking up a, a, a book and it really went nowhere. And you had to read three issues to start getting a story moving like you might from a Bendis comic book. Instead, this felt like every issue always was propelling that story forward at a good pace. Yet you still got de details and everything else you needed, but the action and that speed kept everything moving. Another thing I really liked about it is the artwork. If you're a fan of the artwork in the comic book, it really does jump onto the screen here. It's not always the same, but it's very similar, and you definitely can feel the connection between that. Another thing I want to mention, too, is the voice acting. The voice acting was absolutely superb. Great voice choices, and there's even maybe an actress or something I don't care for much delivers really well in this series. It looks like everyone is really giving their A game. Nobody just sat back and go, well, I'm getting a paycheck. I'm going to do this cartoon. Instead, it looked like everyone had a passion for the project. It really does. You can hear it coming through. It's just exhilarating. It's creepy when it needs to be. It's disturbing when it needs to. It's hitting the right notes with the cast, the voice cast, just doing a great job. Once again, as I said, we don't pick our voice cast and then convert our characters to that. You pick the voice cast for the characters. And to say that they didn't do that is probably a disservice because they've picked a, they've picked a really good cast to, to do this. So great art, great vocal work. Now I will say the episode some are more woke than others. They have woke interjections, but I don't know where I really stand on this quite yet. Some people are really off put by that. But if we look a little bit more, the characters that are woke tend to be ones that are not necessarily in the right. Like, for example, the most woke character was a villain and he was a nutbag and he was completely woke. So, OK, there we go. And we have Amber Bennett, which is a bit on the woke side, and he's going to eventually not be with her. So I don't know if they're making fun of woke or not. I don't know. Or if the show is actually hitting a little woke. It, it's hard. Well, I shouldn't say little. There's some pretty hard hitting woke there. But, uh, you know, that's common for today. But I'm, I'm still on the fence about that. And some people are like, oh, well, that's that's the way Robert Kirkman wanted it. But yet they have no proof to support that whatsoever that I, they have shown to me. I don't know if there's any proof of that. If you don't have any, if you have any proof there that he wanted uh, race swapping for additional diversity for woke reasons or anything, by all means, put it in the comments below. It's just once again civil discussion. This isn't going to be meanness. Is that the way he wanted this to be, or is this just a sign of the times? So that's me and my notes here, by the way. So what do I think overall? I think you're not going to miss out uh, if. 
if you didn't have the comic book and you're just watching cartoon though i do i really do suggest that you read the comic book the comic book was fantastic but you don't have to read it to enjoy the cartoon and i think you should give the cartoon a chance if you get to those woke points just roll your eyes a little bit at it laugh it off and continue moving on because as i said it's not necessarily maybe the way you think it is harsh it's bold it's brash where it needs to be it's in scope where it needs to be the pacing of the cartoon goes well and most of the negativity i've read on things like rotten tomatoes and things are people that don't understand the content like invincible is ridiculously violent um actually that's the way the comic was and it's supposed to be and that, that's sort of the the funniness of him being invincible for a guy that's invincible he gets the crap beat out of him a lot but he always comes back so maybe where he's truly invincible is in his heart and in his character to move forward which does really make an interesting character because a character that we tend to like isn't always about violence it's about the character their growth and the character that they show and how they can overcome maybe it's the captain america fan in me i don't know but i want to know your views on this okay i think it's very close adaption in general once again, the animation's great. The voice acting's great. It does have some issues, right, when they change characters. I'm not a big fan of that. But they did, in my opinion, add more depth, even though I don't like how they treated her at the end of the season. But it's been a fun time. No matter what it was, it was still a fun cartoon. And it maintained that violence level that was surprising because I really didn't know if they would. But what are your thoughts on the Invincible Season 1 cartoon series i would like to know you can hate it you can like it that's perfectly fine the choice is yours but i want some civil discussion on this and thank you everybody for taking the time to stick it out and watch this i greatly appreciate that help this channel grow by hitting like and subscribe if you don't mind and as you see here without these people supporting me on patreon these videos would not be possible because i do not monetize this channel for multiple reasons my main one is i'm not a big fan of some of the practices of youtube that they choose to do and how they pick and choose so i don't bother with monetizing so i'm free to say whatever i feel like as long as they don't yank it off and then i'll put it just have it on bit shoot as well <laughs> once again it's thanks for these people keeping this channel going thank you for all your time and until next time keep it frugal